Hi, I'm Alex Radcliffe. And I am Ricky Radcliffe. Today we are reviewing GPS, Mountain Goats, and Sequoia. And these three games are from board game tables. They were put together in a singular package, which is why we are reviewing them together, and why our table looks like a bit of a mess right now, because <laughs> we figure the best way to do all three of these together would be just to set them all up, and you could get three games in uh, this space. It's a little bit of a mess, but we can do it. Now, Ricky, which one of these do you want to take first? I think I want to do GPS first because this is my favorite out of all three. Okay, well that answers the question I was going to ask a little bit later, but okay, go ahead. During GPS, the way you win GPS is getting your numbers from 1 to 12. You start wherever the start is, and then you continue going. You, As you can see, we have a bunch of satellites all around right now. There's a 12 here, a 1 here, 3, and a, and a bunch of the rest. And the way you start the round is you spin this. You don't want to spin it too hard. And if it went wherever it lands, you put a spaceship down. Um, I'm going to put my... Oh, none of these are good. I'll just put my seven there. I'll figure it out later. Okay. Mm -hmm. And as you can see, I'll just put the seven there. But that's a very terrible spot. So once you run out of spaceships, then you just move spaceships around the board. Gotcha. So effectively what you're doing in GPS is you're doing that number sequence that, like she said already, like Ricky said already, you're trying to come up with a numeric sequence from 1 to 12 in ascending order. This is going to be similar to games you haven't played yet, similar to Racco to a degree, similar to 10 Days in Africa. You're trying to build out a pattern. And then once your spaceships are all out, that's when you can start reconfiguring to ultimately get your spaceships in the ideal pattern until you, at some point you win the game. The way you start the, the set up the game is you sit up the board, kind of like a puzzle. And then you have your spaceships. You pick a color, and then you flip them all upside down, and then and then um, separate them. And then and reveal, then, and you flip three from each player. And yeah, and then every time you place a spaceship down, then you flip another one. Sometimes I forget, but <laughs> you will eventually you will realize. Yeah, but, and you keep and, going. And you keep going until someone gets them all in ascending order. If you both, if two people get it, then you just share the victory. Now, what do you like about this game? Um, I like it's simple. It's super cute. Had a spinner as a rocket ship. It's easy to put the numbers around. And one thing that I like about all of them mm -hmm. is that they're all simple scoring games. Okay. Okay. Anything you don't like about the GPS? Um, I just wish that it, it was a bit more there, stable. The spinner was a bit more stable because a bunch of times when you spin it, it goes like boom and then completely yeah. spins off the board. Sometimes the entire thing just comes off. Yeah, we have had that happen a few times. But <laughs> and the spoke usually comes off. It's okay. We just like we like spinning it a little harder than we should sometimes and it ends up going <laughs> off. So, so for me, I agree with you. GPS is a very, I mean, all of them, like you said already, all of them are very simple, very easy, very accessible. Uh, GPS, I did probably find the most fun in terms of setting up my patterns. For myself, I will say I did also feel that GPS had the least element of actual choice in the game. Meaning in terms of the strategic decision compared to different games, I felt GPS usually had the most obvious what I wanted to do as opposed to really thinking it through. Mm-hmm. And then past that, anything else about GPS? Um, I, no, I think that's it. Okay, so from there, let's go to Mountain Goats. I'll take, I'll tackle Mountain Goats because it's on my side over here, and then you can tackle uh, Sequoia at the end. Mm -hmm. Okay, so for Mountain Goats, in Mountain Goats, what you're going to do is this is going to have elements of can't stop a bit, but ultimately you're going to roll the dice every single time when it's your turn, and that's a good point. I should note, in GPS and Sequoia, the game, the turns are sequential, meaning, not sequential, the turns are simultaneous, meaning you do the things at the same time. In Mountain Goats, you actually are going to take turns. So I'm going to roll the dice, and then I'm going to come up with any number of pairings. So for example, in this case, I'm going to pair up the five, the five and the two threes for a six which means i'm going to take my mountain goat on gray and i'm going to go five taking a point as well as another point because i got two fives knocking the other mountain goat to the bottom and then my six is going to move my gray up here effectively you're trying to move up these tracks you're gray oh apparently she's gray effectively you're going to be moving up these tracks trying to get to the very top and then when you knock someone when somebody is at the top you will knock them down to the bottom so there's a kind of an aspect of once you're at the top you want to keep trying to get those numbers because once you hit the top of a five every additional five will be another five points effectively. And then we have the same with the six, seven, eight, nine, and 10, although those are harder to match up and get the pairing, so there'll be a little bit less of a of a mountain climb up to the top. Additionally, if you get a full set of five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 10, you will get this bonus point token over here. That is effectively mountain goats taking turns, going up the mountain, knocking goats down, and anything you wanna add? Uh, but let's say your roll was like this. Oh, you're showing them that roll? <laughs> Look. 
you one one has to still be a one, but the others can be anything you want. Yeah, so if you roll more than one one, the additional ones can be wild. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What do you like about mountain goats? Um, well, do you like mountain goats? Let's start with that. Yes, I love it. I love how the figures are actual goats, not just blocks. Oh, that is nice. Yes. Yes, I am so glad that they actually decided to make them actual goats. I think it's fun how you, you're rolling dice and... And you can just pair them up, and I like the additional one rule, because that would be oh. really annoying if it wasn't there, because then this would, the highest thing you could do was it would be an eight, and that would be really disappointing. Yeah, if you roll multiple you low numbers, one eight. higher numbers in mountain goats are almost always good, because you can pair them up in different ways. Lower numbers are not nearly as flexible, which is why they have that one rule. And it's also a really good it's also a race game, because there's only a limited amount of each one. And you have to get these by getting every single one. So it's really annoying when one gets run out and then you don't have any. Because like, then you can't get any of these. But it's super fun to just try to race to get to get one of each first and get the bonuses. Now what did you like? What do you not like about Mountain Goats? Anything? Mm, not much. I just, I just wish it was a little easier to like move everything around. Mm -hmm. And the dice are a bit... Tr tricky yeah it's a bit tricky to do it on a surface that's not wood oh yeah we that's we, that's that's our fault our first game we tried playing on the carpet that's our fault that's not the game yeah I could, but i kind of wish they had come with something to roll a dice on oh that makes sense because this game is a, a, a game to play with kids so you might end up playing it somewhere besides the table because you'll usually have games set up that you're playing with adults. Gotcha. For me, I, I, overall, I like Mountain Goats. I thought it was a solid game. I like the... It has elements of Can't Stop because of the pairing of dice, obviously. It doesn't have the fantastical fun point of Can't Stop where you're, like, just rolling forever again and again and again trying to, like, oh, I can't stop. So it's missing that. But I do like how you can pair up the dice in multiple configurations. It doesn't have to be two dice, two dice. It could be, you know, all four together could be one. You can have four separate dice all being their own individual thing i like the set collection and the aspect of pushing higher and knocking goats down for me the thing i dislike the most about mountain goats in comparison to the rest is it is the slowest to play because of the fact that you're taking turns all all one at a time going round about especially if you're playing it with younger kids it is going to drag on a little more a little more compared to the other two anything else um i agree with you it is a bit slow depending on who you play out play with but it, but all of these games have, except for GPS, both of these are good games to play with a, one child that that is learning math, because it makes you count. Well, even this is good for math because it has sequencing. Sequencing is important in math. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it can also and it can also help. Well, and help you figure out how to correctly say the numbers when you're hearing everyone say them differently. How you do? Mm -hmm. It might you might end up saying them differently. Mm -hmm. Uh -huh. And what about Sequoia? You want to tackle Sequoia? Uh-huh. In Sequoia, you have a bunch of these lily pads. You roll... First, you roll your dice. You keep them secret. And then and then you pair secretly pair them up. It goes up to 12, higher than mountain goats. Okay. Once you're done pairing, you, always, you will always have one extra dice and no, you do not get to use it. Okay, when... Okay, I just finished pairing, so I'm going to say I'm done. I'm done. I have an 11 and an 8, so I put a li one lily pad on the 11 and one lily pad on the 8. I had a 6 and a 7, so I'll be joining over there. Okay, great. And how do you win? The way you win is by getting the most points. You get points by having the most lily pads at the end of the game on, on one thing. The second place gets the lowest and the first place gets the highest. The brown one and the blue one is for second place. As you can see on the bottom, it has a one and then a two. Yeah, and the setup of the game, you, each of these various uh, two through 12 are going to receive different first and second place markers that will determine the scoring for them. And then it's all about trying to figure out how to roll the dice and figuring out where the battles but are that you want to occur. at the end of the game, you're tied. Like, let's say it's the end of the game right now. Me and Abba are tied right here. So we get to do a death battle. Nothing. Nothing. Okay. Well, it w this would go on for a bit because it's a 12, so let's not try to do it forever. But effectively, you do have sudden death rounds where whatever's left tied out at the end, you're going to have sudden death rounds back and forth until you someone wins and gets on that spot. Mm -hmm. But let's say there are more than two players. 
There's, and there are three different people on the thing, and one person already gets first place. Then you're just doing a death battle for the second place. But let's say there's not a tie on one with three people. Then the second place and first place get the things, and third place just gets nothing. Yep. And so that's basically Sequoia. So, let's start with the first question. Do you like Sequoia? Yes, I think it's super cute. It's pretty. Um, I like how you are able to roll the dice. I like how it's secret, so no one knows what you're planning. And I think it's a really good game to play. Is there anything you didn't like about Sequoia? Well, I don't really like how I don't come with veils, because it's really annoying to do this. It's really hard to do to shield your dice and match them at the same time. Yeah, it's a, it's a game where you're supposed, you to be to rolling, your you're supposed to be rolling your dice secretly, and you, the best way to do it ultimately is doing this, and then kind of peeking in. Because there's no player screens, there's nothing you can really use, so you're kind of just rolling under your hand and peeking in, which is functional, but a little bit annoying. Anything else? Um, no, that's... That's probably it. And one thing is, there's only one at two. So I, I think you should always place the two on the 12, because 12 is the hardest to get, so I think the highest point should be on 12. Yeah, for myself... Yeah, I did it in the order. But for myself, I think Sequoia times. is my personal least favorite from the trilogy. I think all of them are fine. I've enjoyed all of them. We are... Don't look at me like that. Uh, Sequoia is my least favorite from the trilogy in the sense that... While I like the I like that Mountain Goats has this aspect of moving up the mountains and choosing when to pursue different numbers like by doubling down and getting like three or four eights in a row because you're at the top of the mountain versus trying to spread out and set collect so you can get these extra bonus points. I like that aspect of Mountain Goats. And I like the simplicity of GPS where you're just going around and around. Less strategy than I would ideally like, less decisions to make, but I still like the actual process. It is a little fun to build up those sequences. I actually agree with you. Sequoia is also my least favorite in all three my favorites are gps then mountain goats then sequoia what is your favorite so i don't know because i i like i think mountain goats has more strategy than gps so i like it more there but gps is shorter than mountain goats mountain goats drags so on so you would say it's kind of a tear totter for mountain goats and gps but sequoia is your least favorite correct yeah that's how i put it and something we forgot to mention in mountain goats if you are already at the top and then you roll and then you roll something that you already have, when you pair it up, you take another token. I mentioned that. I mentioned that. Right. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. The strategy aspect of doubling down a number you already are on. And so yeah, overall, all three of them I liked. All three of them I thought were accessible. I don't know if I'm likely to pull these out at like a game night kind of situation. I think these are great lightweight family games. I don't think in terms of filler games that I have for for game night for other people, I'd probably pull out other things. They are all solid games in this genre. I know Sequoia is aiming to be a combination of Las Vegas and Can't Stop mixed together. I personally prefer Las Vegas and Can't Stop. Uh, what this what these games have going in their favor is they are incredibly easy to teach. They are beautifully produced. They come in a set that makes me kind of not want to give up any of them. I will say, speaking of which, is something you don't necessarily know yet, but I both like and dislike the small boxes. I like them because they're very compact, taking up very little shelf space on the on the, the shelf and whatnot. I dislike it because they really optimize perfectly around that, and it can be hard to get everything perfectly back in because of how cramped everything is. Yeah, I agree with you. Small boxes are a disadvantage and an advantage. And another thing about small boxes, they're harder to open. Yeah. Lastly, I will note, we do have the expansions for all three of these games. I have not played with, we have not played with most of them. We have played with the fifth player expansion for Mountain Ghost because we had five people. Past that, we haven't played any of the expansions. I will say, looking at them, I'm not that excited about them. I, it's not that they're bad, it's that I don't know if they necessarily add that much. They add more players, which can be helpful. Uh, Sequoia adds an element of negative point scoring, where certainly where two of the trees will be negative points, so whoever gets the most will score negative points. Does that sound interesting to you? or It definitely does sound interesting. It, so, remi it reminds me of No Thanks. So we'll give that one a shot. We'll see how that plays out. And then GPS is the one that I think I want to say you guys the most interested in. It It adds three different special satellites that affect things. I, they're, they look solid. They look fine. They just don't look like they do anything particularly amazing past expanding the player count, which I will say expanding the player count in Sequoia and GPS is a good thing because of the simultaneous play. Mm -hmm. You're opening it up to more people, but not more downtime. Expanding the player count in Mountain Goats does add more downtime. Um, I don't understand what you mean by that, because I have no idea what the expansions are. Well, for each of the expansions give you extra players, right? And uh -huh. because GPS and Sequoia play at the same time, meaning we all do our things at the same time, it doesn't add that much more to the game length. But... In Mountain Goats, when we take Mountain turns... Goats does. Exactly. 
Yeah, but because Mountain goes is one at a time. Yeah, and then Mountain goes adds an extra scoring option where you're trying to score on a, on a different separate mountain. That looks a little interesting. GPS adds three more different satellites that have special abilities that I'm not sure if they'll add to the game or complicate an otherwise streamlined game. And like I said, Sequoia gives you a negative point module, which to me, I would just try to avoid those trees. And especially when it comes down to end game scoring, I don't. I just create pairs that don't go there. So I'm, I'm wondering how it plays out. But those are, are you know, not really reviews, but initial impressions from reading the rules only. That's basically everything I felt the need to say. Anything you want to add here? Um, not really, though I would say that in Mountain Goats, it does not take longer depending on the amount of players. It, ta it depends on their age. It mainly oh. depends on their age and how good they are at math because it takes longer if they have to, if it's harder for them to do the math. Yeah, that's a fair, that's a fair point. Uh, I am definitely biased about the slower playtime because I've been playing it with younger children to a degree. Uh, if you're playing with a bunch of adults, you would rattle through it pretty quickly. I would say probably from these, Mountain Goats probably would be my, my favorite to play with adults because I think you probably could get both that strategy aspect that I enjoy about it with the shorter playtime. That's a good point. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's been our review of GPS Sequoia and Mountain Goats. All three games, I believe, are solid. All three games give you that stellar production quality that board game tables typically brings to the table. And as of right now, all three games are staying in our collection. Uh, time will tell how they'll play out, but I will say that small box games, especially small box games that my family likes, tend to stay a lot longer than big box games that no one's playing. And that's basically it. Until next time, I'm Alex. And Ricky. And have a good one.